originally from Puerto Rico because my parents were born in Puerto Rico but I was born in New York and raised in Puerto Rico I my childhood I spent it most of the time in New York and then when I was like 10 or 11 years we moved with, I moved with my family to Puerto Rico and there's where I spent the majority of my years so that's why I feel more like I grew up more in, in, in Puerto Rico where I have more register of memories Well, other than Puerto Rico and New York, um, I've, I've been living in, in Florida already for almost already 10 years, basically. Basically itself, I, well, I've only lived in Florida, but to compare it's pretty much hard to compare them because they're really both contrasting. Um, but mainly what I have seen in, in New York is the more uh, variety in culture like you can notice it more in New York than you can notice it in in Florida perhaps since Florida uh, well Miami better said because I live more more time in Miami Miami is a very young city so it's still in development and it's more there's more a variety of uh, Latin culture and um, in New York you see Latin you see Italian, you see all different cultures and you could see it more reflected in, 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 in their lifestyle and the food and the art, the music. And in Miami, it's more focused more into the Latino atmosphere, at least in my opinion, opinion in my experience. I don't have a, a, a before and after, basically, Ever since I was born, I could just remember myself always singing in the house, uh, at school, at church. So I really can't say there's a before and after because even when maybe I didn't take it more, didn't consider it in a, in a, as a serious career. But anyhow, when I was in school, when I was in college, after I was finished with my daily routines, I would as soon as I, was, I would, as soon as I would get home, I would start singing, practicing, listening to music. So I, I don't see no before and after of of my music life to say that way. Basically, I would say six years. It's been that I've been singing in a more. Um, focused level that I that I saw that singing was something that I could actually pursue as a as a career and and, and I started um, getting more involved with people in the in the music atmosphere and and in groups and bands and basically it's been I would say yeah it's six years that I've been more in the professional level taking it in a more professional level. First time I ever sang in public was when I was 11 years old in um, my sixth grade gra um, graduation. That my my colleagues selected me to sing the the, the school like the school anthem to say it that way. And in that moment that I st stood up in the stage, yes, I was nervous. But once I felt the energy of the people and all my my. Um, my class roommates, my, uh, I, from that moment on, I noticed that this is something wild that I, that I love. I just love seeing all the energy, all the enthusiasm of the people as I sang and as we all sang together. It was something really nice for me and, and that's what I always remember that first time. <laughs> Well, like every family, there's always the, the family side that disfavors you and it really is not too, too supportive to say it that way. That of course they see it more like, oh no, it's really difficult to, to jump into the, to that industry. But there's always that other part of the family that is very supportive. One way or another, you can see the support and in, in my family, it's half and half, but the most important 
part of my family, which is my, my parents, my, my siblings, and, and my niece and nephews, they're my fan club to say it that way, um, my main fan club. Um, they've been really supportive from the beginning and to this present moment they're, they're always there cheering for me and, and um, always sharing my music and, and making me feel motivated. I'm a very empathetic person that I, I really, I, I pay very close attention to other people's feelings, even if it's a stranger. I always, I always um, like to, to learn from other people, from their behaviors, and even when I'm walking in the mall, I always, place, um, I always pay a lot of attention to people's face, to their gestures. I, always, I can always sense when they're sad, when they're happy, when they're excited. I'm very, very empathetic to that. And all of that actually for me is motiva motivational. Why? Because it makes me see how us humans are so, we're so sensitive. We're, we're, we're all made of feelings, you know. We're all very simple inside, as complicated as we try to make our life seem. And all of that always motivates me to to keep on, to keep on writing, singing, and and pursuing life because we're all we're all the same. At the end of the day, we are all the same. We are all flesh and bones, but also feelings. To be honest, I can't say I have an absolute favorite. Why? Because one one moment I I, I could be hearing some. Spanish salsa and be dancing to it. Then the other moment, an hour afterwards, I'm like listening to a Celine Dion or a, a, an old ballad or or some jazz. You know, if you if you ask me how many songs I if I heard today, they're all contrasting. They're all totally different. So I don't have an absolute favorite. It all depends on the mood. <laughs> I would say actually Adele is a is a is an artist that I pretty much um, really admire for many different reasons. Ever since I heard her first song, well not her first song, she had other songs, but a song that that really captured me was "Make You Feel My Love," and this was before she was really recognized here in the U.S. I'm always researching on world music and different artists. And I heard her voice and wow, really, she sang from the heart. I, I, I could just feel it. And she doesn't have, she doesn't have to hit high tones, high notes like other singers that have to, you know, um, hit high notes in their songs. And, and, and of course, that's something I admire. Of course, I have many artists that, that can hit really nice high notes and oof, I love it. It makes my hair stick up. But in her, it was more simple the way she sang that song, but very, 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 very touching her voice and everything. And then when I looked up more information of her and I saw her video and I, and I saw her image, the what she, how she is, she, wow, she really, Oof, got got me there. I was like, I became even more a fan of her. Why? Because I saw how simple she was, how she doesn't focus on her body image, how she's not the typical sexy sex symbol um, um, singer. And it was just more emotion, more lyrics. There were more, yeah, more more lyrical her her songs and interpretation and. Definitely, I, I will consider her my my favorite star. Her and let me mention also another of my favorite um, band to say that way is Coldplay. I love I love how how they they put so much attention to what they write. You know how they love sending out a message. All of their songs have a message. You know, and not only the song, also the the music. They they really put a lot of a lot of emotion into it mm -hmm. and that's something that I truly enjoy just scrambling through their lyrics trying to interpret what they meant what they must have felt in the moment they composed it and those are my two favorite English singers there we go again Adele and Coldplay for the same reasons I mentioned above because Adele it's, it's it, 
I feel like Adele, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't, she's not famous because of her body or her image. She's famous because of her voice and because of her feelings, you know, what she, the way she interprets her songs. To be honest, I get quite anxious, very, very anxious because I'm, I'm very perfectionist and I, oh, of course, I'm, 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 I want, I'm very critical of my own voice. I want things to come out perfectly. So I really do get anxious because I'm, I'm dying to hear the end product, the end results of, of, of the session. My mind state is enjoy the muse. Enjoy the muse, enjoy the feeling, flow with it, live through it, and just let it be, you know, enjoy, enjoy each moment. Why, why worry about tomorrow? Just focus in the present, what, what you have. And if you're, no matter what career you're in, in, in my case, I'm a singer, so I just enjoy, you know, the best gift that God could have given me, which is, um, my voice and being able to appreciate and be very sensitive to to the music every every singer is unique we're not all made of the same you know we're all different and our voices are, are very different no matter how much people like to compare every singer to another singer we're all very different in that in that sense but yes we all have we all admire other singers, so we try to incorporate some of their uh, techniques into what we we do because we admire it, you know, and and it helps us also in our own development. But I think that we we're we're in constant development. We're in constant evolution of our of our own selves. Well, it was actually a really good experience. Um, you could feel very, a very good vibe once you you enter the studio, and pretty much a really good connection between the the producer John. You know, he's a really amazing person to to work with, and that definitely helps you out. It makes you feel that if if I'm I'm an anxious person, you know, I get very anxious, and it makes me at least. Kind of relax a bit more. I feel that I'm I'm in good hands to say it that way. Well, absolutely yes. Being part of a born a musician for this video, it has really been helpful for me. They've been very, very supportive and, and have helped me, you know, promote myself as an artist, get more recognition, and also to to put it this way, you know, born a musician is a very good portal for for all newcomers you know for all new artists you know it, it helps us get exposition um, more exposure that's the word more exposure and it helps us you know um, with with our music you know they're they're right there to to give you a hand to to help you distribute your music to different online stores you know you don't have to worry about contacting different sources no you have it there and in my own experience, you know, the whole staff has been very, very, very helpful with me. And, and if anything, they're always there promoting me all, all over, doing their best so I can be able to, to spread the word of my music and, and be a motivation also to, to other talents that are also um, in this business trying to, to, to move forward. Well, pretty much, I guess, yes, you know, I, I, I grew up believing that, oh, yes, you know, you have to be signed with so-and-so record labels in order to make it, you know, and no, now I think it's uh, the good thing about internet, it's that you get a lot of exposure, you know, and so that has made the music industry pretty much changed a lot. You don't really have to rely on um, being contacted by by a, a well-known record label. No, you can start your own your own record label to say it that way. You know, you can start in your own way and and build yourself up. You know, from there, from that platform that we have, which is the internet. I used to live my life. Envisioning the future and having everything 
kind of like planned how my life would be, this and this and that. But with time, you you notice that you have to live your life day by day. Yes, have a, a vision of what you want, but not get too obsessed with the future because really life is full of a lot of surprises and sometimes better things even come. Sometimes your visions are small and life has something bigger for you. So I pretty much live, I, I live the moment. I enjoy the moment. I do my best in this present moment because like I say, Sometimes I'm a really I'm a really spiritual person. I have a lot of faith in God. And sometimes God has even better plans for you. So I've learned that you know I've been very upset in the past for planning my own life and then with time I realized that oh wow, this so and so didn't happen because so and so that is even better was gonna happen. So live the moment, live the present, but of course remember there is a tomorrow, so try to make it the best as possible. Since I was a kid, I, like I said, I, I lived in New York and I would always see Madison Square Garden and wow, imagine myself there someday singing. So I would love to perform in Madison Square Garden and of course in my own island in, in, in Puerto Rico. And I've always admired in the, in the, in the Spanish market. I've always admired Mark Anthony, I, I love him. And I've always, I've always said to my family, oh, I want to someday, I want to, I want to be able to open up for for Mark Anthony, and also single duel with Luis Fonsi, which is another Spanish singer that I, I admire his voice and and in the English market to say this way, more American market, um, I would love to to go on tour with Coldplay. I, I just love them; <laughs> they're magical. <laughs> In my teenager years, I started taking piano courses and I was pretty good at it. But then once I got to, to high school and, and then to college, I kind of pushed out to the, put that to the side and focus more on singing and in what I and in my in the degree that I was doing, which I, I also have a degree in communication. So I, I kind of focus on those two things and put that to a side. So nowadays I can't say I'm a musician. I can't say, oh yes, I am a pianist because no, just like I don't like hearing a singer that is singing a whole song off pitch, you know, singing it a disaster to say it that way, unless it's karaoke, I could say that, but not in a, in a professional, um, song, you know, in the radio. I can't say I'm a pianist, but yes, I do know how to read music and I do play the basic chords and that's that's the way I actually write my songs, playing the piano. But out of respect for all the musicians and the pianists out there, I, I, I don't say that I'm a pianist myself. <laughs> I study communications and I have a bachelor's in that and also major in um, in journalism and marketing and I wanted to be a news reporter but like in my last two years of college I, I had to um, do a lot of research and, and see a lot of um, news channels and just seeing how cruel this world is how many negative news there are and seeing how the news reporter has to contain themselves from their emotions and just be neutral you know try to be strong enough to to be able to um to say the news i couldn't imagine myself being in that position without crying without wanting to hug a mother that just lost her son you know i just couldn't i i, I would be the the, the crybaby of the of the scheme so i I said no, I can't be a news reporter. I'm still considered, considering being a, a weather reporter because I'm always paying attention to the weather channel. So maybe that, you know, that could happen someday. And other than that, I also wanted to be a flight attendant. I always, I've always admired all the, the flight attendants with their uniform and how they get to travel to many different places. <laughs> That is a question that I can't say I, I like more this and that because that's like saying who do you love more, your older son or your younger son? No, I love, I enjoy both of them at the same time. Why? Because they're both, they're both producing me a different feeling. For me, writing 
helps me release my inner self you know that emotion that those feelings that I am holding in in me in the moment you know and once I write them and I'm able to sing them I'm able to express them in a, in a in a different way you know that lets me lets me um fly with it you know lets me go to a I'm able to take my lyrics to a different level you know and, and able to express it differently so I enjoy both of them at, in the same way I don't have preference I actually love to draw. Um, I started off drawing monsters and stuff like that when I was a kid. And now as an adult, I, I, I love to draw a lot of abstract stuff. You know, I, I just let my hands take a pencil and just draw whatever they feel. And sometimes I feel that my hand has their, its own personality to say like, like that, like in Adam's family, the walking hand, because I, I myself don't know the end result of what am I drawing or what am I painting because I'm also now starting to, to experiment with painting also and I just let whatever is in there in me take action and, 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 and draw something and then at the end once I finish the whole project that's when I start interpreting okay why did I draw this you know because it's basically everything is like my subconscious to say it that way and it's really fun for me because I don't know for me it's a surprise the end the end result you know so then afterwards I started guessing okay it was because of so and so and so and so to my fans I would like to say thank you so much for supporting me for for always showing me so much um so much energy, give, giving me so much energy so I could continue and, and, and so much positivity and, and beautiful messages.